Five, four, three, two, one. All right, welcome everybody. I'm Colin Cole, joined with the Panthers leading tackler, one of the best to do it in the business right now, Mr. Frankie Louvel. Thank you for joining me, sir. Appreciate sure having me. Man, let me ask you a question. So I started off when I was young, man. I, I was probably about five, six years old. My dad told he tells me this story. I came to him one day and I told him, man, Dad, I know what I want to do when I grow up. I want to play football. When did you know you wanted to play football? I'll say when I was in eighth grade, I grew up playing soccer my whole life. All my siblings, all eight of us. Um, I'm the youngest out of eight. Uh, we grew up playing soccer and you know the footwork and everything kind of got down. So when I transitioned over to football, I felt like that Pop Warner when we started, it was the first time in Samoa we had Pop Warner football and we started, it was my year when uh, we started. And uh, that was like the starting point of me playing football, man. I was just too big for soccer, kind of bullying people at that point. Um, and then, man, just played yeah, football from that on, and man, I just knew it like this was for me. But also, it was a dream for me, because it was kind of like a getaway um, off the island to help my family and provide for them. So you came in this league, obviously out of Washington State, leaving America some more. Talked about that a little bit. Um, but you came to this league undrafted. Mm -hmm. Like a man like myself, undrafted free agent, I, you kind of have to prove yourself, right. to prove your worth. Got an opportunity with the New York Jets. Obviously, that didn't go the way that you were planning, but you, you, you've made it to this point where you're here with the Panthers, and the Panthers execs are talking hugely about you. Man, uh, it, it took me to like my sophomore year in, in college to really find out, like, man, I could really do this. Uh, I played middle backer. Mike and Will, my, my sophomore in uh, college. And then, man, I was just kind of like that hybrid dude. So in that fall camp, going into my junior year, that's when I kind of popped from outside backer to inside backer, kind of used me around. And uh, I found my edge, and I was an edge guy. Um, and I was I was this guy always going forward, you know, love contact, kind of starting the line of scrimmage, you know. Um, and then made my transition over to Kevin Green. I talked about a lot about Kevin Green as far as like my process in the league, starting in the league, because he gave me the opportunity after 32 teams, you know, after the draft, didn't get a call, but then Kevin Green gave me a call. A call. So yeah, I went to the New York Jets in my first year, um, went on this row. I, I don't think a lot of people know about this story, but he kind of, right before training camp, he, he went up on the board, he wrote five names, and then I had to, pretty much out of the nine of us outside backers, he put five names on the last name he put on that fifth, uh, on the fifth, that was my name. He said, I don't know how you gonna do it, but this is my list I'm taking in the season. So I took that to heart, man. He challenged me every day at practice, man. And, and all the little things he talked about, your eating habits, your sleeping habits, um, your film habits. So a lot of those, man, I feel like I, it, I harped it down to the team, man. So, and making that transition even to, to today, man, I. Having Coach Dom Capers on the, uh, on our staff, man, talking about he when he was a head coach here, coaching Kevin Green when he was here, and he sees that embodied in me of Kevin Green, man. So just surrounding myself around that and knowing that like undrafted man, you know how it is, just proving people wrong, but also having that edge and, and that, that on your shoulder where man, just count me out and just, just see me on the top, you know. So. You kind of embody what this defense is about. Um, I mean, Coach E, uh, he, he, a DC Coach E, man, he, he does a good job of breaking things down. Um, and the whole staff pretty much breaks it down, man. They keep it simple for us, help us to play fast on Sundays, man. Um, the little details of, of our work, man, that's, I feel like that's a huge part of, of what we do. Over the year, played against guys like Dominic Raiola, um, Kevin Mawai, a number of guys that have come out of that region. What does it mean for you coming from that region and uh, some of the names that I just mentioned in terms of representing your, your country? What do you feel like it's like for you in, in your situation? Man, I just feel like, man, we come from small islands and we come from big hearts, you know what I mean? Um, everything that you do, you start, you finish it. Um, and you know, just keep, I feel like for us though, religious in God and having faith, in that aspect of it, um, embody us as a people, as a group, as a culture. Um, and trying to kind of take that to, we're also family oriented and everything that we do as a group, man, we're trying to have everybody buy in. So um, I'm trying to bring that culture here. You know, I'll be doing a little 
the little melee, the patia before the pregame, you know, get the guys going, get the butterflies out, man. <laughs> And uh, the guys like it, man. So just embodying some of that culture in, on the team, man, and, and seeing them going out, man. And So you became a full-time starter last season and started 14 games, 111 tackles, and seven sacks. What do you change or refine about your, your game as a whole to get to that point where you're now starting? Now that I have that, that starting role, man, it's just, ain't nothing changed. Ain't, the plan ain't changed, the script ain't changed for me as well, just last year was last year for me. This is a new year for me. And as far as my game, what I can improve on, um, just knowing my part, knowing the defense as much as I'm knowing the offense and that side of the ball can do. And the, the more I can know about what they can do, the slower it can get for me. Also being off the ball and, you know, different from being on the line of scrimmage and really reading what's happening um, from that standpoint. So nothing changed, man. Just the script is script and sticking to it and uh, standing on business here. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, you're wearing the green dot on your helmet, mm -hmm. which means you're getting the play, your play call on yep. defense. You are the leader yep. on the defensive side of the ball. How do you take that role on? How do you feel about the coaches trusting you with having that, that job? Oh, I take that very highly, man. Um, for, the tr for coaches to trust me and having you know me on as a green dot, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have all the guys ready, making sure they all lined up. You know, over communicate. Sometimes I forget what I be having on, just trying to line everything up. But that that comes with it. So, you know, having having that um, leadership role, man, is is huge for me. But also, like, I'm blessing. Stop that. Describe the emotion of the mo of the best moment of your NFL career so far. Um, I say the Arizona game, that pick six. Um, Stop that. I always say a prayer at the 30 yard line, but when I picked that ball, it was always on that 30 yard line. Probably like 32, you know, in that area. So I, mean, I picked it, and that week, man, like we were talking about defense, um, scoring, you know what I mean? Like we need to score on defense, and but that was probably like my, because it was my first pick six ever. And it was on the 30-yard line, and, and all the boys are there, man. And it was a happy moment for me. Like, that was the first time ever, so. I was, and I got to go back out there right after, so I was a little bit <laughs> too excited. But I was like, all right, got to get my mind right. I got to go back out there, but yeah. So you've made a huge impact in your short career so far. What do you want your legacy, the legacy of Frankie Louvre to be said once you, once you hang up your cleats, which 10, 15 years down the line, what do you want people to say about Frankie Louvre? That I was real, that I kept it real with everybody, man. Um, inside the building and off the field, and knowing that I gave everything I got to the game, and I left something behind where I know, man, the legacy behind, knowing that I stayed true to my word, and also like, help in any way I can as much as I can on and off the field. Um, I might, you know, touch one soul, maybe a thousand souls, but at the end of the day, man, uh, leaving this game knowing that uh, I left it all out there. Um, shout out to the Tulsa Mo Rugby team as they head into their grand final tomorrow. Um, man, all the best. Go with God. Um, the whole island supporting you guys behind your back. Win or lose, man. Uh, Y'all made us proud. So uh, let's get this win, man. Let's go. I'm originally born in Toronto. Mm -hmm. My parents and family are from Jamaica, so I understand having to go through the citizenship process, yes, having sir. to, uh, you know, what that's like. So you've recently obtained your citizenship. What's that been like for you? What was that process like for you? Oh man, it, was, it took like a whole year, probably a year and a half, trying to get that process, um, and then taking that test. Um, and I'm thinking it was a multiple choice test. That was my first mistake. Um, knowing, finding out it was all orally, oral test. Um, I failed it once, went the second time and got it done. So um, yeah, just for those who want to take that citizenship or who want to take that test, man, it's all oral. Um, and uh, it was a blessing, man, to have my parents, uh, especially the biggest picture of why I did what I did was just having my parents and also sponsoring them to come out here and being in the States, but also watching me play ball. Um, my pops watched me play last year my mom never seen me play a snap of, of football like almost six years in the league. 
um, professionally. So that's a big reason why I did what I did and also sponsoring them and coming out here, man. And also, you know, while they're still living, they can see um, me playing, so yeah. That's beautiful, man, that's beautiful. Well, Frankie, man, I appreciate you. I, I don't have anything else for you, man. And uh, keep pounding, keep pounding. Keep pounding, man, that's thank right. you for having me. Appreciate right. it, yeah. absolutely.